Thank you all for being here this evening. Thank you for supporting the Women of Ill Repute. Thank you, Women of Ill Repute Repute. Thank you for supporting the Rape Crisis Center and Art and Theater. So give yourself an applause first for that. Thank you. So when I was 22, many, many years ago, um, we were at this bar, and I'll never forget just being there, smoking a cigarette at the time. Lights went out, and all of a sudden, just one badass woman at a time walked out. Same age as me, fierce as ever, shoulders back, heads up, red lipstick, sexy, beautiful, powerful, intelligent, and they just blew my mind. Now, I know for a fact that the Women of Ill Repute Repute came about because one of the members of the performance was raped. And this community of women came together to heal as friends. And that healing circle became a piece of artwork. And that piece of artwork is what you're going to see this evening. And I challenge each and every one of you to make sure that you are awake this evening, that you let this work awaken in you everything that you have, and you also go out there into the community and you do this work that needs to be done for women, for children, for our elders, for the LGBT community, for your sisters, your mothers, your grandmothers, and tell those stories. And please, thank you so much for being here. Continue to support the arts, continue to support the women of ill repute, repute, and everyone you know that is doing this work. Uh, thank you again, and tonight, we want to welcome the Women of Ill Repute, Repute. The Women of Ill Repute, Repute. 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 Women of Ill Repute, Repute.
more than candy, more than respect, is a hunk of hunk of man in a hunk of hunk of car and those drive-by love notes that remind me that I think I'm in love too. <laughs> hit me hit with one of those cat calls. You finally hit on the one thing that drives me wild. I just hope your daughter gets to meet such giving men as you. The short skirt speaks. She was told she was too angry, no hysterics. Told she did not act like a victim, no tears. Told she did not cry like a victim, no pleading. Only angry accusations. But above all the he said, she said, some were deaf to her defense. Some could only hear the resounding babble of the short skirt, which to some speaks louder than truth. When the short skirt speaks, it will not be ignored. The short skirts, when the short skirt speaks, it holds credibility hostage. It brandishes a time bomb of shame and carries with it a list of demands. The short skirt demands all eyes upon it, demands culpability. It provokes while placing blame on women who were never meant to wear the pants to begin with. The short skirt spits. Bring me the mute victim's tongue roasted over the fires of rape. Bring me the presumed innocence of the accused and I will multiply the burden of proof as I rain down reasonable doubt from way up above on my high horse side saddle, answering all suspicions at last with a flash of one bare thigh. Short skirt says stop. Short skirt says go. Short skirt says stop. Short skirt says go, stop. The short skirt did not say stop. And oh, all the wa old wives are held captive by the tales of the day when the short skirt opened up all expectations of violence for those who seek sex for pleasure. The short skirt whispers sexuality too dangerous for the weaker sex. It scapegoats the body and absolves all voyeur eyes, commanding this culture of victim blaming and slut shaming. The short skirt speaks a dangerous myth of distraction. Take one hypnotizing stare, if you dare, up the short skirt and mysteriously forget female feticide, dowering and honor killings. Forget date and acquaintance rape. Forget the sex slave trade. The short skirt will explain them all away, defining sexuality in male terms and bringing at long last a bloody end to that word, feminism. I was told I was too angry, no hysterics. Told I did not act like a victim, no tears. Told I did not cry like a victim, no pleading. Only angry accusations, but above all the he said, she said, some were deaf to my defense. Some could only hear the resounding babble of the short skirt, which to some speaks louder than truth. Truth deeper than clothing. Truth which if heard sounds something like this. It, it did happen. I did not give consent. Short skirt or snow, snow suit. It can happen to anyone. However I was dressed, it was not my fault. And now, I will not cry for you. I will not plead to convince you. I will not dress for you. I will not justify for you because this is how a slut walks. This is how a prude talks. This is how a victim acts. This is what a survivor looks like. This is what a feminist looks like. This is how Madonna rages and how the whore weeps. Do you know how it feels to eat something you hate? No, of course not. I never made you do that. Well, imagine if I forced you to eat your own shit. That is what you are doing when you force a woman to have sex with you. That is rape. Awake, asleep, drunk, or sober, if you do not get a response from her, or if her response is no, ask her, you must stop. Ask her if she is okay. Hold her close or move away. Respect her wishes. Rape is evil. 
brought to you by a society that does not value women. I'd argue that a woman is more valuable than a man. Not to make you feel inferior, but to stress the need for you to treat all women with the gentleness and fierce respect. Believe me, you'll be glad you did. Daughter, Miha, you're beautiful. Your beauty is not only external, it is internal. You must know that men will try to get you into their beds. You should always be careful when choosing a partner. It is usually best to choose the one that is not too aggressively pursuing you, the quiet one. However, sometimes the quiet ones can be a little freaky. <laughs> if you decide to take him home, or maybe just make out in the car, please let your friend know, or even better, bring your friend along. <laughs> but if you should decide you do not want to have sex with him, you must always speak your mind. Please note that you are in no way ever obligated to do so. You are in charge of your body, and no one can take that from you. Now go, explore, and have fun. You're at a party. You left the party. You're about to make your big move. Now, the word you want is yes. The magic word is yes. 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 <laughs> no is no. Silence is no. I'm busy is no. I should get back is no. I got to get up early tomorrow is oh my god, take the hint already. No. <laughs> No can't always be said. So, repeat this. Only yes is yes. Only yes is yes. Only yes is yes. Yes should be sought often and creatively. Yes should be given often and creatively. You're a good person. You deserve, you want sex. <laughs> sex that whispers your name, that begs you to keep going, that bites your ear, relishes your neck, wraps itself around your back, and straddles you. You want this, and you can only get it when you know only yes is yes. This will only take a minute, says the box, but allow five for proper results. It's the same routine. Piss, cover, sit, and wait. One line, two lines, plus sign, minus sign. The lady at the store excitedly probing. Do you think you might be pregnant? My husband and I are trying to have kids too. I give her a shaky smile. Lie. Say it's for a friend. This will only take a minute. I listen to the girls at work griping about sore backs and cramping insides, and I could kill them for it. I have to fight the urge to gut their bellies and trade their empty internals for mine, occupied and tainted. It only took about a minute before it felt like radio waves fluttering through my body. Before you, the size of a pea realized your power to pull me downward to my feet. Before you began like an atom bomb harvesting in my abdomen, detonation was vital. I decided I didn't want you before I even knew you were there. Why can't I part my lips without screaming, without our regret seeping through skin? What should have been blood shed a month ago is now an endless stream of tears. Around the family table, right-wing relatives unwittingly exchange propaganda, much like the poster-toting picketers outside the clinic. Murderer is what they will call me, baby killer. But they just don't know I do this because I want what is best for both of us. Slowly, I feel the sleepiness disperse through my veins, and then I feel nothing, nothing but a jerk, 
a hot jab in my abdomen, someone squeezing my hand. I picture you swimming through that too, your tiny pink and circular soul ascending upward. And we were free from each other, both ready to be reunited at a better day. My mother tells me when she discovered that I indeed was inside her, she felt the most unabashed happiness she's ever known. If I don't feel that happiness at this moment, if you're just salty stones stuck in my heart, it will never be right. This pain, your departure, has made me realize how much I will crave that joy when it's perfect, planned, and desired. Your hair is shiny and straight and long, and your hips are starting to form, and you are wearing heels that your parents should know will cause your calf muscles to not grow properly. I want to take your hand and march you straight through the head of the Boys and Girls Club after school challenge taking place in my cafeteria, march you straight to the principal's office and yell, penis is not a dirty word. Uh. <laughs> You've been put in detention, and by the way, no, I don't appreciate someone pulling you from my excellent after-school enrichment program because they thought you needed to be punished more than you needed to be taught. You were going to learn about butterflies. You were going to understand how monarchs can smell milkweed up to two miles away, how they migrate over 1,200 miles a year. You were going to be inspired, empowered, groomed to lead. Instead, you were shamed. Your, when your mother came to pick you up, the challenge instructor tried to explain in his broken Spanish, repeating louder and louder in front of your friends, penis! She said, penis! <laughs> Confused, maybe embarrassed by her English or maybe by the word, mom grabbed you and didn't question, didn't ask how you were taught this word, didn't, couldn't think. Maybe this is a word that is taught in, oh, I don't know, health class? And you were absent the next day, and the next day, and the next. Oh, I wish I could have run up and said, she needs to know this word. Be friends with this word. Penis. Penis, 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 penis. <laughs> She needs to giggle at this word, laugh out loud, blush, and then when she's ready, organ by organ, learn the full vocabulary. Testicles, anus, vagina, clitoris, <laughs> mons, vulva, breasts, nipples, areola, HPV, HIV, pregnancy. Consent. Consent. These words and more she'll need as her body, as, as your body grows into the special, perfect, sacred you. You are meant to giggle while mouthing the words, finding joy in your curiosity. You are meant to explore and get to know these words. But I didn't run up. I second guess myself. I wanted to back up a fellow educator, be unified. But damn, that didn't work out for you, did it? Little girl, with your hair shiny and straight and long, I'm keeping my eye on you, because I see you. I know you. I owe you. And one day, I will take you by the hand, and you will be inspired, empowered, and groomed to lead. She gave birth to me early. Her back and thighs bloody from the whipping you gave her. Nurses and doctors gave her dirty looks and the blame. He soon again called me hermanito. 
You threw them down at seven months, a flight of stairs. That night, they learned to fly, somehow survived. You're a man, come back to haunt me, now that I'm a woman. I fell in love with him, his poetry, his drawings, his turning me into the Azteca, Chilonen, life-sustaining corn goddess. I drove west side to south side, any time, every day, for his beauty. I know that at my age, Mama fell for your charm, married too, and tried to please. Y pensé, después de tantos años de ser tecato, and being exiled from our lives, fuiste al fin en muerte. Why did you come back for me? Me habitaste tanto, I ignored Mama's warning. Realized I would sing la canción de la misma lucha. You think you're a man. You once held me as a baby outside a window, seven stories high, threatening my life, my mother with my life. AIDS claimed your frame, yet somehow your spirit escaped. Now it's his hands gripping my neck in a manic depressive rage, something about demons possessing his body. Maybe you. Both times, I'm innocent, not knowing why, I can only cry. Thinks he's a man, he grabs me by the arm and throws me pregnant on the bed. I realize there's six more months to protect before his rage kills my baby. By now, I don't care about me. I only keep thinking about what my mom went through, went through, then through, I too. In the event that you are not able to run, nose, ears, eyes, throat, temple, nose, ears, eyes, throat, temple, nose, ears, eyes, throat, temple, multiple strikes, multiple strikes, multiple, nose, ears, eyes, throat, temple, nose, ears, eyes, throat, temple, nose, ears, eyes, throat, temple, multiple strikes, multiple strikes, multiple, high, low, high, low. Statistics tell me that most of you have not had 
an honest to goodness, true, full, vaginal orgasm. <laughs> or you ain't gear, getting nearly enough, am I right? <laughs> I had my first full, honest to goodness orgasm at 25. Ooh. Oh, I started having sex at, close your ears, mom, 19. And I did have clitoral orgasms. But those are nice. Those are fine. I love the play. <laughs> but a clitoral orgasm is a special animal. It requires a lot, a lot, a lot of rubbing or licking. And just like baking a cake, one lick too many, and you're just stuck with a gooey mess. Am I right? <laughs> clitoral orgasms make you feel grateful. Thank you for doing that! <laughs> that was so considerate! <laughs> they make you beholden. Oh, it's your turn now. <laughs> but, the full, but the full vaginal orgasm, FVO for short, it's life affirming. You become Wonder Woman in touch with the universe. You are stardust and you see it all so very clearly. The full vaginal orgasm gives you power, makes you realize that your partner, if you happen to have one, <laughs> is goddamn lucky. <laughs> makes you generous. Give me a second. Oh, you're next. <laughs> so let's move on to part two. The vibrator. Vibrators are a critical stepping stone to FBOs. Most women experience their first full vaginal with the aid of a battery-operated device. Well, didn't that little piece of knowledge just take the pressure off of everyone? <laughs> to help you turn it off in case you lose the ability to move your limbs. <laughs> and also, I can't stress this enough, skip the batteries. They're bad for Mama Earth, and you run out at, at the, the worst times. Time. <laughs> they remind you that you are beholden to no one. And you shouldn't be having sex with anyone unless you can have sex with yourself. So. Ladies and gentlemen, teach yourself some new tricks. <laughs> for men, it's easy. But for us women, it's an art. It can take years to perfect. That is, of course, unless you are lucky enough, someone who appreciates and devours every inch of your body. So, for those of us that don't have years to wait for a selfless partner, here is my guide to orgasms. Part one, how to have an orgasm by yourself, otherwise known as masturbating. Relax. If you like, take a shower, or at least wash your hands. <laughs> now, allow yourself the freedom to touch any part of your body that feels good. Let all your worries melt away as you gently rub and caress yourself, imagine a very sexy scenario. Let your fantasies lead the way. Music is helpful. Prince is my pick. <laughs> Use your voice. Say things that turn you on. Words like fuck or cop or God. Whatever takes you there. If you have time, make a night of it. Take a long bubble bath. Put on your favorite lingerie and pose in the mirror. The more uninhibited you are with, your, with yourself, the better. Orgasms come easy when you find a way to appreciate your body in the most sincere way. Part two, how to have an orgasm with a partner who happens to have a penis. <laughs> Relax. Lay your partner down. 
Take the reins. Take a ride, if you will. Start slow, then fast, then slow again, then fast. Let loose, feel free. If you want to stimulate your clit for an even better orgasm, turn around with one of his legs between yours and continue the same motion. He will appreciate the view, and believe me, it won't take long. <laughs> Part three, the lazy way. <laughs> Directly be below your clit and take a ride. This works well for quickies. <laughs> Part four, oral stimulation. Relax. Stay in the moment, in your body, not in your mind. Forget about the dirty dishes. Now, with two fingers, <laughs> ask, now with two fingers, open your lips. Ask your partner to first wet their fingers, then slowly insert one or two of them into you. Have them lick and, kiss, lip, lick and kiss your lips and clit while you vocalize the most when it feels the best. I promise it won't take long. I never knew what an orgasm felt like until after I had my first child. I'd had sex and enjoyed it, and even almost climaxed for years from the very first time at age 15 all the way to age 20. I decided to be celibate for at least a year during my, most of my pregnancy and some time after. What a mistake! I, never, I had no idea that some of my best orgasms would happen later while I was in this sacred state when everything you feel is heightened. Back to my first orgasm. It was my first time making love with a woman. We were deeply in love. I watched her come into her room with just a towel. I couldn't take my eyes off her smooth, muscular legs. The desire I'd been carrying for her for over a year had finally made me strong enough to make a move to kiss her. After we'd kissed passionately, I laid back in her warm, comfortable bed and let her pleasure me like no one had ever done before. She made out with my most intimate body, part of my body, kissing, nibbling, licking, touching, and caressing me until it happened. I climaxed for the first time in my life, and it felt cathartic. I cried tears of blissful joy, and then thought to myself, all these years with my past lovers, all of whom I'd loved and even been in love with some, all these years, not one of them cared enough to make sure I'd gotten mine. These fuckers only cared, and I would only cared, that they had come and were pleasured. She I never left them hanging the way they'd left me hanging all those years. This time, I didn't even have to reciprocate. I didn't know yet how to make love to a woman. She knew, and understood and truly only cared that I was fully satisfied, which made me cry even more, feeling treated like a queen, being fully pleased, and not having to worry about my lover coming. I know now how to make love to a woman and feel wiser for it. For me, it's still all about pleasing my lover, but at least now I know how to lose all inhibition. I know it's important that I allow and sometimes demand and expect that I have my own experience, my own orgasm. My favorite orgasms are the ones I have all by myself. In other words, I know how to masturbate and give myself the time it takes to reach climax. Still, I know my body better than anyone else ever will. Orgasms are reached sometimes with just hands, rubbing and touching. Of course, I'm still always grateful for caresses and kisses in the right spots my neck and my nipples are my favorite pleasure spots. The beautiful thing is that each of us is unique. We each have our own ways of reaching orgasm. The important thing to know is that everyone deserves a good orgasm. <laughs>
it makes for a willful daughter. Cause it's been three days since she's let me brush her hair. Those teeth of hers are seriously turning green. <laughs> and her toes smell like pickles cause she refuses to bathe. She just keeps saying over and over, my body, my choices, she explains. <laughs> and she's gotten several versions down. You know, when she's making her first argument, it's a straightforward thing, like, meh, I don't want to do that. My body, my choices. <laughs> <laughs> when she's trying to be, you know, a little more persuasive, she's like, come on. You're the one who always said, my body, my choices. <laughs> and when she's frustrated, which is oftener and oftener, it's my body, my choices, often punctuated with a slam on the door or a stomp on the foot just to make things clear. When moms claim space, demand time to themselves, we make willful daughters. She is willful. She's argumentative. Some call her a brat. Many look at me and shake their head. Get it together, lady. Teach that child some manners, some values. You don't have long before she's a tween, and then there's no stopping her. They're right. <laughs> I've made her this way. I made it so that she looks straight at a grown-up and says, I don't believe you. I don't feel like smiling, so why should I? Or, and, you're creeping me out, I'm leaving. <laughs> Am I personal favorite? No, I don't need to give you a reason why. <laughs> My daughter is willful. And I am grateful. I've taught her to own her body, to honor her decisions, and make her own choices. I was 11 when she found me sobbing, ashamed of these large, soft objects bulging out of my chest, seemed to be growing bigger every day, ashamed of curious fingers that poke Ashamed of comments and whispers that sting. Ashamed of greedy hands that rope. My mom wiped away my tears, held me tight, and gifted me with the most precious gift I have ever received, self-confidence. Her words have shaped me. Her love has molded me. Miha, you are beautiful. Never feel ashamed of what God gave you. Most women wish they had what you have. You should flaunt your hourglass figure. I was too young to truly understand her words. But she never tired of reminding me, even sewing dresses that flattered my frame. I began to feel my shoulders lift, my back straighten until I was finally able to celebrate my body. Now I stand proud, lucky to have this gift to pass on to my daughter so that she will one day blossom. And you're not supposed to tell a little girl that they're beautiful. <laughs> so say they're smart, say they're kind, full of potential, good at math, but not beautiful. Beautiful is dangerous. <laughs> it angers. Well, my daughter is beautiful. <laughs> she teeters on her pillow with dirty tiptoes, kissed with fairy glitter, and asks, Mommy, can I open my window? Her voice is small and pure, and she, with her hands tiny and stretched, she twists in moonlight and street lights, and her, her brown skin turns purple with a silvery halo. See, Mommy, she marvels, at a landscape full of fairies and wishes drawn only for her warrior princess eyes. And I, desperately try to unsee 
that she will be one in five to face hunger, that she will be one in four to endure a sexual assault, one in seven to attempt a suicide. I tried to unknow. Halfway across the globe, another mommy just like me watched helplessly as her daughter was ripped limb from limb and burned alive just for the audacity of her beauty. I tried to scrub these images from my brain, but they like fairy dust stick to everything. And my daughter's beauty is just as pernicious, for she is pre precocious, she is precious, she is sacred and pure, and she is willful and smart, and she's a trickster, and she is headed into waters of ache so deep. I would love to tell you that laws are made not to protect her, but to protect you from me, should you hurt her. <laughs> I would love to stand here mountain mama bear style, threaten an eye for an eye, should the world with its latest brand of evil come knocking on my door. But I can't. I know better. I know I need your help. Maybe it's your privilege, or your fearlessness, or your whiteness, or just your shoulder, whatever you got, I need it. I need you to stand up for her sacred childhood, stand with me, scream into the hurricane, stop praying, stop splaying black skin on my screens. I'm not fooled, I know brown skin has been, is, and will be again the next that you digest. I need you to choose the battles we must win. Stand with her. Stand with me. Proclaim your loyalty. Loudly dig your toes in. Open your blinds to your privilege. Carve, scrub, sweat, and scream! Catch bullets for the truth. Bodies planted like we move with food when we bleed. Malcolm Martin and Malala. 43 desaparecidos de Iguala. Arizona's ethnic educators. Wendy Davis, filibusting Texas, Texas legislators. Speak up, spit truth. Hands up, don't shoot. Mass silence yields violence. Every new moment registers as compliance. Sharing truth should be ceremony. Instead, there are targets on every testimony. Bullseyes on outspoken facts. Speak your peace. We catch bullets for the truth. Prophetas are preachers, but what does it teach us? We speak and catch bullets for the truth. Bodies planted like sweet women with food when we bleed. We catch bullets for the truth. Prophetas are preachers, but what does it teach us? We speak and catch bullets for the truth. Bodies planted like sweet women with food when we bleed. Come, gather round the, the flames. Our wild tongues for change. Come, dance around the drum. Food, bread, and truth for everyone. You are. with is now nauseating. On a daily basis, we suffer like morning sickness only morning, noon, and night. As we see black and brown men, women, children beaten, harassed, shot, murdered, brothers, husbands, fathers, mothers, pregnant sisters, tased and brutalized, my son sings NWAs, fuck the police, fuck, fuck, fuck the police. And I let him, in love, in fact, I, I sing along. Because these men whose pay comes from our pockets, these men who are supposed to protect and serve, these men with badges and guns, 
are just that, men, no mightier than any other. We should not be afraid to reach for our IDs just to be shot repeatedly. We should not fear these men, for all they are is men, no mightier than any other, not wiser than my father, no mightier than any other, no mightier than any of you. forward. 